Welcome to another episode. Today we're doing a number of things. We'll be testing and replacing the windshield washer pump that lives in the reservoir. We'll also be inspecting the lining or the hosing that runs from the reservoir all the way up to the windshield washer nozzles. And lastly, we'll be replacing the reservoir itself. Now to get to the reservoir or to do this job, every car is a little bit different. You may have to remove the front bumper. At the very least, you'll have to remove the plastic wheel well housing. And they're held down by clips and screws. I'll include a link in the description box below showing on how to remove the wheel well housing. Also, if you need a guide for the bumper, I'll include a link in the description box below. Now, of course, this will be on our website as well at carsandtoys.net. I'll include it in the body shop section. I'll also attach a link in the electrical section. Now, let's start with this rubber hosing. This hosing runs from the pump. As you can see, it runs along the frame rail and then eventually it reaches the engine compartment. Now, if you have a leak somewhere in this line and you can't get to it because your fender is on, you have a plastic wheel well housing. Just remove that piece of plastic. Usually it's held down by clips and screws. Once you remove that housing, you'll be able to see this line. So again, if we follow it, it goes right into the engine compartment, comes out right here. And if we follow it, it goes right up into the hood and right into the nozzle. So of course you have one right here and then there's another nozzle right back there. So if you have a leak anywhere you want to trace it by looking at this rubber hose. Now if that's okay you can also replace the pump. So I'll show you how you can test the pump and then lastly we'll swap out the uh, the bottle here. So we have two wire harnesses running to this reservoir. One is right here for the windshield washer pump you have a second one for, that's your low level indicator. In other words, when you get low on fluid, you get that little dash, that little light on your dashboard. That's this guy. You can test that if you want. It's the exact same process uh, as, a, as I'm about to show you. So go ahead and remove the harness connector. What we want to do is verify that power is getting to this harness connector. If there's no power getting here, then this pump could be perfectly fine. You have a, maybe a splice in the wire, maybe a fuse shot. So you want to verify that power is getting to this. Now to do that, you use a multimeter. We'll use the red terminal to this guy, and we'll use the black terminal or ground to a metal point. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Now looking at the end of the harness connector, you can see it's very, very small. And for me to fit this, uh, the, the lead from the multimeter in here, I would deform the plug. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to use is a very, very small nail. If you happen to have something lying around like this, um, such as if you have a picture hanging kit, you'll often get these very, very small nails. So what I'm going to do is place one end right into the harness connector. And then I'm going to place one alligator clip right there. And then the other alligator clip will go on the multimeter lead. Okay. Now the second lead, the black wire is your ground wire. So I'll place one alligator clip against the ground wire and then the other end to any good metal point. This is the frame right here. As you can see, we have the bumper off. So we'll attach it like so. So what we're going to do is turn the ignition key to the on position and we should see around 11 to 12 volts, which is battery voltage. And that will verify power is getting to the pump. Okay, to the on position here. Don't crank it again, just turn it on. Now if you're not getting any power there, check the wiring in the back. Sometimes they fray, melt, they're chewed up, insects eat away at it, whatever the case may be. If everything looks okay regarding the wiring, check your fuses. It's one or the other. You either have a break somewhere or your fuse is shot. Now once we finish with this test, we'll also take a look at the motor itself. So let's remove it from the reservoir. We'll place it on the bench. We'll apply battery power to the motor and we'll see if it does click on. Now the pump is held into the reservoir. If you take a look, there's just a, a grommet right back here. So just gently remove the pump from the reservoir. Make sure you have a drain pan ready to catch all of the fluid. And we'll put in a brand new pump. And I'll also show on how to replace the reservoir just in case you're looking to do that as well. And also, if you open the top of the cap, this will flow a lot better. There we go. And then just remove the 
Rubber one going to the pump. There we go. Now to quickly test this motor, I just have a battery pack. This is a light bulb battery pack. It puts out around uh, 11 to 12 volts. It's enough just to see if this guy clicks on. You can also use your car battery. So again, I have a uh, positive terminal coming from the battery and a black or a negative terminal. We'll touch one lead with a positive lead to the right here. And then the other lead will go to the second terminal and we should hear the motor click on. And there we go. So that's the last test you can do to see if this motor is working correctly. If you need to remove or replace the reservoir, just go ahead and move the rubber line, the wire harness. Of course, don't forget the wire running to the low level indicator on the bottom of the bottle. Okay. You also have to remove the filler neck. It runs to the bottle. And there's your reservoir.